Suchi's ability to attract huge crowds of people during her campaign rallies has made the Burmese government nervous, and recently she was unable to secure a stadium for a rally in Mandalay, Myanmar's second largest city. Mandalay was the site of the 2007 Saffron Revolution when Buddhist monks led an anti-government uprising. To tell us whether there's been a setback in the regime's program of reforms, I'm joined today by Dr. Mong Zarni, a visiting fellow at the London School of Economics. Dr. Zarni, can you give us some background on the problems that Suu Kyi faced in Mandalay? I think it's a clear, one of the early and clearest signs of the regime's feeling uncomfortable with Aung San Suu Kyi uh, campaigning, uh, mobilizing public opinion, and most importantly, touching the issue of um, constitutional amendments, because this is the constitution that the military um, uh, crafted to uh, assure themselves of safe and secure wealth and uh, future power. Now, some analysts see other worrying signs of a possible slowdown in the pace of reform. Do you see these as well? Oh, absolutely, because, you know, I, I have not cheered on or played a cheerleader role uh, on the side um, as the so-called reform process started. I mean, for two reasons. One is that the regime has not had a, a genuine change of heart, unlike, say, uh, the apartheid regime under De Klock. And we don't, we are not approaching Mandela moment, or we are not in a, a De Klock uh, Mandela negotiation phase even. There is no real deal between Aung San Suu Kyi and the so called reformist President Thainse. What is motivating, uh, secondly, uh, the, the regime to make these gestures of reforms? And to a degree, they are real, but. Uh, they're not uh, significant enough because all the existing draconian emergency laws are in place and uh, the, all the uh, generals who were in power two years ago are the same guys who are calling the shots. And so there's no real change of heart. There are no serious, significant, practical reforms on the ground. A lot of talk. What is significant is the West is desperate to go along with the reform talks because the West has a different agenda rather than genuine democratization. The West is concerned about the economic downturn in its uh, backyard and also uh, uh, it's concerned about the growing power of China. And Ch uh, Burma plays a strategic role in helping contain China's growing power. Do you believe that the European Union and the U.S. are moving at the right speed in terms of easing sanctions against the regime? Yeah, exactly, because I think that the, the, it's not so much as easing the sanction because, you know, as far as Washington, um, the, the sanction has not been eased significantly. I think it's the European Union that is desperate to use carrot. Like, you know, the European Union just uh, offered 200 million euro or 200 million dollar uh, development aid, where uh, whereas on the ground situation, the regime is in a in no position to undertake any meaningful developmental programs because there are no legal or institutional reforms. And as far as the Washington, it is its moves are very clear. It is planning to send a David Betrayer, uh, the CIA director, in a situation where human rights and reforms are most needed. What you know? What type of advice or contribution that CIA is going to make uh, democratizing and uh, um, promoting human rights in Burma? Thanks so much. Dr. Mong Zarni is a Burmese scholar based in London. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.